What are you doing? Hello, welcome back to What's the Safe Word? I'm Amp. And I'm Bo. And today we're going to talk about animal roleplay. More specifically, different types of animal roleplay. Overarching world of animal roleplay. It's an entire kingdom we've missed. An animal kingdom. <laughs> Simba. <laughs> So animal roleplay at the very core is when someone takes on the roleplay of an animal in a play scene. Someone takes on a submissive or dominant role and they act as an animal in the animal kingdom. It's also referred to as pet play. This play is actually seen in a lot of literature, folklore, religion, even normal media like television and comics with superheroes. It is not bestiality, which is actual sex with an animal, and it is not zoophilia, which is being attracted to actual animals. That is very, very important that we say that now before we start talking about this. And so this week we researched a bunch of the very large groups of animal role plays that exist out there and we wanted to talk about the different types of animals that exist. Each type of role play focuses on a specific part or strength of that animal. Take it, a dog, or take it. Take it! You kind of get the idea that each animal comes with a different personality type as well as different kind of characteristics that they take on. Nay, I say. Nay. Um, For the record, rhyming is not a pun. Uh, shut but, up. you know... <laughs> Pup, dog, wolf play. At least one of the participants acts out in a canine mannerism. Bark, 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 bark. This is sometimes associated with leather or BDSM culture. There's a lot of formations of families, or there's like hierarchies, alpha, beta, what? gamma. And there's also colors involved sometimes, which are helped to indicate ownership or just a connection or relationship that someone might have. Kittens, cat, or lion play, these are people that take on feline characteristics. A characteristic of it is that they might want to maintain some sort of independence, not want to be tamed by their their owner or handler. Very catty by nature. Yeah, they're gonna be catty. <laughs> and they shouldn't be trusted. No, never. never. Trust a cat. Never. Sometimes collars can be involved, but most of the time kittens prefer to be strays. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Pony play is where at least one of the participants dresses up and acts like an equine animal. That's a pony. That's a pony. For all those uncivilized hats out there. <laughs> you plebe. <laughs> There are generally three basic groups in pony play. Cart ponies, and these are ponies that pull either a cart or a sulky. Second is riding ponies, and this is where the pony is on all four or two legs, and the rider is going to hop on their back and ride them around. Something that should be noted for this is that being on two legs and supporting someone is not always going to be safe. You could easily injure yourself. So, you go on all fours, and allow the rider to put most of their weight on their own two legs. And finally are show ponies, and these are ponies that dress up in dressage, elaborate costumes, collars, harnesses, bits, blinders, and these ponies follow their owner's directions in elaborate ways and do tricks. Pony play also encompasses donkey play, which is a more dopier version of pony play. Wow! Cow or bull play, where someone fetishizes impregnation, lactation, milking, beef. It's what's for dinner. This can include the fetishization of milking or continuously bringing someone to orgasm. Wow! And these milkers can be on the breasts or they can also be on the dicks. And some people that are into bull or cow play enjoy the septum piercings that you get up here. And those were actually used to train and to break bulls for actual farm life in real life. But don't pull on humans. No. That That's hurts. mean. Move. Move on over. <laughs> dragon play is for people who like looking at or collecting shiny objects like the dragons in literature. Wow. Dragons are also known to really enjoy macro or micro, which is size play, as well as some talk about really enjoying vor. And vor is physically, a, and not cannibalism, no. but the role play of eating someone. Com it, it whole. So not like cannibalism, like... <sighs> Just look it up on Fur Affinity if you don't believe us. <laughs> Some dragons are drawn to kind of the power dynamic aspect of it, of dragons being incredibly large, ancient, powerful creatures. Also, what was a dragon called in, in uh, Stranger Things? Didn't watch it yet? Let's just scale oh it back. Oh my god! I haven't watched it yet. Scale it back. Ooh, yeah, you gotta watch okay. Stranger Things! <laughs> Pig play. And these are people that enjoy early tales, guttural sounds, eating a lot of food. It's a really messy role play where people swap a lot of body fluids. And I, I mean any body fluid. That's, that's piss. That's...
Not just gonna just say it. Leave it there. There's also a large group of people online that enjoy monkey or ape role play. So these are people that are kind of almost like very caveman or Neanderthalish. They they enjoy big feet. They might enjoy bananas. They kind of just like being big and silly and like. Meat Tarzan. They do not like Mario though. Oh. Mortal enemies. <laughs> just they butt bump heads. Hands. Yeah. Box play. It's like a more mischievous. More sly, more version of puppy play and kitten play, all rolled into one. Ultimately, these are the biggest, largest, major groups that we could find online, but that's because they have a large presence, a large visibility. There are tons of other animal role plays out there for anyone that has the imagination to create one. It's just a matter of seeing it out there. So, I mean, there are role plays for rats. Bunny. And bears. And turtles. Pikachus. I've seen so many Pokemon. Pidgeys. Ugh. <laughs> It's it, this role play is not so specific. It's kind of your your imagination is what limits you to this play. With all that in mind, how is an animal chosen? How did you choose that you were a puppy? Because that's kind of like my personality: happy and dopey, and very easy to trick. What? And you follow balls. <laughs> In animal roleplay especially, aftercare is very important, so make sure you bring that person out of that headspace. Like every kink we cover, safety is important. Animal roleplay is not bestiality. I repeat, it's not bestiality. <coughs> Accurate. Not, not bestiality. bestiality. Say it with us. Muy bien! <laughs> yum yum yum. What? That's what the backpack says. Oh. <laughs> I am into backpack play. <laughs> and piggybacking on that, no pun intended. Hey. Always make sure you have a safe word, whether it's verbal or non-verbal. Today's safe word is... Princess Peach. Because the princess is always in another castle, which is not a euphemism for like a dick being somewhere else. Oh, sorry, your I wife's mean, cheating on you. Oh, that's what that's not what like. I meant. <laughs> wow. Use that paw on the like button. And let us know if we forgot any animals or if you prefer a certain animal roleplay that we missed down below in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to What's a Safe Word. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hello, this is Future Amp here editing the video, and I am just here to tell you that these three people, right? Well, that's one person, but there will be three, three people, win? right? You didn't win anything. These three, get, no, these these. Is that my treat? Uh, they're sh they get shirts. They get shirts. They get three people right here. You guys are the winners of the shirts. Oh, also, where's Chris, my shirt? You're wearing it. But we're gonna comment down below and send you a message, so make sure you respond. And <laughs> you're not helpful. You told me to do whatever I want. You're adorable. Though. <laughs> so make sure you look out for that. Thank you guys again, and we'll see you guys next week on What's the Safe Word. Bye. You wanna say bye? Bye. <laughs>